All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So uh, I'm doing this all on one screen, um, so apologies if I'm uh, missing eye contact along the way. But um, first of all, I'd like to welcome everybody. Um, thank you so much for being here. We've had a bit of a break um, over the summer, and I am hoping and I know that I'm feeling very refreshed and excited about a new calendar year working with the Pacific Northwest audio engineering se section to bring some exciting meetings your way. Um, my name is Greg Dixon and I am the chair of the Pacific Northwest section and tonight I'm happy to present our first annual uh, AES PNW audio trivia bonanza presented by Jess Berg who I'll introduce a bit later and our section. Uh, Jess has been helped out with production support by Rick Chin, who I mentioned earlier, and Dr. Mike Metesky. Uh, please note that we are planning to be hosting meetings on Zoom for the foreseeable future. We have no plan to stop doing the Zoom meetings anytime soon, so we appreciate all of your participation and we're hoping to keep these meetings coming your way. Um, our next official meeting that we have announced is the November meeting. Uh, we're working uh, currently on an October meeting and hoping that we, we will have an announcement about that soon. But we do have a meeting planned for November 21st, um, and it's tentatively titled Back to In-Person Meetings Without Losing the Best Parts of Online Participation, hosted by Dan Mortensen and Lawrence Schwedler here at DigiPen, uh, where I'm where I'm at right now. Um, this is going to be a very interesting meeting for us in that it's going to be the first in-person event that we've hosted in uh, around a year and a half. Um, and we, were, we are planning to host the meeting concurrently. So those of you that are uh, joining us from outside of the Pacific Northwest or even members here in the Pacific Northwest that want to join us but may not be uh, wanting to come to be a part of an in-person meeting, we welcome you and we want you all to, to join us there. The whole plan with this is that we can try to have active en engagement and that people feel like they're actively participating in the meeting regardless of whether they're here in person or online. And I'm gonna ask Dan to talk a little bit of, about that in just a moment, but I have an important announcement about the folks that may want to come on November 21st and join us here on campus. DigiPen will require full vaccination um, and I'm going to be posting information about how you put that info in so that we know that all the people attending are vaccinated and currently on campus we require masks even though I'm not wearing a mask right now that has to do with me being alone in this room right now. Um, so we hope that if you are feeling up to it and you want to join us for that meeting in November that you consider uh, coming in and joining us in person or online. And I'd like to turn the time over briefly to Dan Mortensen to talk a little bit about the initiative and the ideas behind this event. Yeah, thanks, Greg. The, the point is to, um, we, at, at our meetings, we've had people from pretty much every continent and like 30 or 40 different countries mm -hmm. Uh, join us. And that has been really cool to meet people from all over the place and have them interested, know that they're interested in the same things that we are. And we want to be able to continue that when we get back to our in-person meetings. So the point is to make everybody both in-person and distant feel like they are a part of the meeting, just like they would be if they were sitting there. So there's going to be extra projectors in the room and uh, audio routed different ways to make it sound like people are actually there. And uh, if, if you're, if this is a subject that's interesting to you, uh, let me know and we'd be happy to make it part of the planning committee. We've got the room uh, at DigiPen reserved for three Sundays consecutively uh, with the third one being the meeting date, the 21st. And we'll set up the whole business there. I'll bring in a PA and a bunch of cameras and uh, some screens and stuff. And, and 
figure out what we need and if we can make it work, because uh, it's kind of a kludge putting stuff like that together. And uh, I don't know what else to say <laughs> beyond that. It's uh, uh, going to be an interesting challenge, I think, as, as you think through it and try to figure out what can you do so that somebody in Tabanga Canyon can feel like they are in the room and be an active participant equal to somebody in the room. So uh, let me know if you want to be part of that. What else should I say? I, I think that that's great. And I would just follow or add on to that, that I've had the opportunity to work with Dan in this capacity before working with him as our live sound uh, engineer. And I'm just really excited about about the potential of this. And I know that with Dan's help and with the help of all of the people involved that no matter what, you know, even if it's not gonna be perfect, um, it's it's gonna be interesting and there's gonna be a lot to talk about. And we're gonna do our best to, to really try to make this thing, as Dan put it, really feel um, like, like you're a part of it. And so, um, I'm excited to see how that's going to go and and uh, excited to work with you too, Dan, on Thanks. that. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I did want to briefly uh, just mention the current list of officers and newly elected committee members as well as returning committee members, just in case folks here might know them. Um, but just also since it's the start of our year, just recognize the individuals that help make all of this possible. Um, as I mentioned, I'm Greg Dixon, the chair. Currently, we have Bob Smith um, as our vice chair, Gary Louie as secretary, Lawrence Schwedler as treasurer, and our committee members newly elected, we have Angie Dane, Micah Hayes, who's with us this evening, Dan Mortensen, who, who just spoke, Jess Berg, who will be our MC and hosting the meeting tonight, and returning committee members, Bill Gibson, Steve Kirk, Katie Gray, Jim Rondinelli, Mike Metesky, and Matt Stearns. I'd also like to bring up the unfortunate news that the AES convention in Las Vegas has been canceled. This just this news just um, came out, I think, days ago. Um, so unfortunately, due to uh, issues with the pandemic, AES has decided to uh, cancel the convention in Las Vegas. So in case you had not heard, that is the news there. At this point in time, I'd like to turn the time over to Dan to talk about his initiative. It's an online series that's been going on for quite some time called Tea Time Topics. And Dan will speak briefly about that. And then I'll talk a little bit about the format for tonight and then turn the time over, introduce and then turn the time over to Jess. So Dan, if you'd like to say a few words about yeah, topics. thanks again, Greg. This is a, a, a series of meetings that have been going on since May a year ago. This next one this Saturday, they're on Saturdays now. Uh, this next one will be the 57th one. And uh, we spend time talking, getting, having people present stuff to us about something that they're passionate about, almost regardless of what it is. It started off mostly as audio topics. Uh, Steve Lampin is from who used to be at Belden is going to give us a presentation soon about his baseball card collection of 40,000 baseball cards or something. And I mean, that's a passion that he's got. And I'm, I'm real curious to learn what drives that. But anyway, uh, Bill Hanley comes from uh, Massachusetts to be with us. And we've talked about his sound system at Woodstock multiple times. Um, we talk about a lot of stuff and get real detailed. And uh, it's Saturday afternoons at uh, 3.30 Pacific time. I open the doors at three o'clock to get everybody's sound and video straight so that we can talk easily during the meeting. And we invite people to keep asking questions until they get their answers, get answers to whatever it is they're curious about from the presenter. And we always go for uh, till seven o'clock, if not longer, which is pretty crazy. And I have to tell people to shut up and 
go home because it's time to stop. Gary has on the screen, this is our uh, Pacific Northwest AES webpage and you can see a description of the thing and it's free and you're invited and uh, just uh, send me, a, send me a, a thing that says you want the link and I'll send it to you. Um, and we have some YouTube videos on my YouTube channel uh, of this, uh, the tea time topics topics. There's some there, but not all of them for sure. I can't keep up with how many we do. Uh, so it's really fun and uh, we're into it. And there's some really smart people who show up and uh, they uh, make it fun to be there. So let me know if you want to show, if you want to come. Excellent. Thank you, Dan. Um, so a quick note about the presentation. I think many of you have been here before, but while we're, I guess tonight it's a little bit more informal. So usually we have uh, muting while um, the presenter is talking, but since tonight's a little bit more informal, um, when Jess is doing the MC, please make sure that we are respectful to her and let her talk and do do what she needs to do. But I think that if you want to want to talk tonight, it's probably a a fine time to you know converse a little bit more than we usually do. But beyond that, um, after the trivia event tonight, we are going to have the opportunity for people to break out into some breakout rooms. We're planning to do breakout rooms of five people, um, and these are chosen at random. So if you feel like socializing a little bit after the trivia event tonight and getting to know some of the folks here from the Pacific Northwest and from other countries and places, please stick around for that after the, after the meeting. At this point in time, I'd like to introduce Jess, our MC tonight, and the person who will be helping us with the trivia extravaganza. Jess Berg is a live sound engineer, educator, tour and production manager, musician, MC, and AES PNW committee member since, um, since 2021, but she's been involved with those other things much longer. Um, she started out on a Tascam Porta Studio four track cassette around 1996, moved to Seattle in 2019 via LA, um, but was born and raised near Minneapolis, Minnesota, where she has um, a lot of musical collaborations and collaborators. Jess got her start working in live sound and jazz clubs in Minneapolis, in the Minneapolis music scene. She became the concert and event coordinator for the Minneapolis Parks, taught a course on South by Southwest at the Institute of Production and Recording, and performed regularly around Minneapolis playing guitar and singing. Upon moving to LA in 2013, she followed her dream of touring the world with major label artists. In 2017, she skidded off a tour bus and into grad school at Cal State Northridge, obtaining a Master of, Master of Arts in Music Industry Administration in 2019. She moved to the Pacific Northwest shortly after and attended the July 2019 AES PNW meeting, where she connected with some new and old friends and colleagues. Here in Seattle, she started working with local audio crews for AEG, including Showbox, Showbox Soto, and as a freelance A2 with Microsoft Studios. Her last tour pre-COVID was a European run with New Power Generation in late 2019 as their production manager and monitor engineer. Jess continues to network and participate in music and audio discussions about the future of our industry while figuring out her next adventures. She currently lives in Bellingham, Washington with her rescue dog. Jess, we're so grateful that you could help us out tonight, and that, thank you so much, Jess. Please welcome Jess Berg. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Greg, for the introduction and for uh, leading us uh, so bravely during these COVID times. Uh, very grateful to you as well. Uh, so tonight we are in for a treat. We're trying something a little different, but this is... Uh, uh, something that has kind of been born during these pandemic times. We've done this a few times at Dan's Tea Time Topics, and it's been a big hit. So bringing it to the section and to the masses here. Uh, so 
um, tonight, uh, what, uh, if you, if you were, uh, checked out the event information, um, what you're going to want to do is have your zoom screen open. I will sh be sharing the game via zoom. And then it's best if you're able to use your cell phone or a tablet, uh, yep. To, uh, play with, um, you'll end up going to a, a website, I'll give you the website, and then enter game pin, and then you'll tap on your phone to uh, provide your answer. And it is like bar trivia, if you've played, um, where the faster you answer, the more points you get. Um, so what we're going to do first, though, is go through a round together, just to make sure everybody's kind of got the the gist of things. Um, so we'll do seven questions just as a practice round. And then there'll be three rounds of 20 questions each. You'll have 20 seconds for each question. And they're all audio based. So um, ranging topics, but the the common thread tonight is microphones. Everybody's favorite. So <laughs> um, without further delay, let's get started. So I'm going to uh, be kind of sharing my screen back and forth here a little bit. Um, and here we go. One moment, please. Okay. Share my screen, share and sound. Bam. Here we go, and, and and tonight is a feel free to unmute type of thing if you have any questions as we're moving along. Um, so what you're gonna wanna do is on your phone or your tablet, go to uh, kahoot.it webpage. And when you get there, you'll wanna enter in this game pin. And for your name, you can either use your real name, you can make up a name, you can use your superhero name, um, whatever you're comfortable with. Looks like folks are getting in. This is great, looking good. Good job, everyone. And also tonight, if you are just wanting to hang out and watch, that's totally fine too. I think maybe Bob was just hanging out um totally fine uh let's see we've got 10 people and might be waiting on let's see is there anybody else do 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 couple folks <laughs> all right is there anybody else still trying to get in all right there we go we've got sound suresh Vaviv, hello, welcome. All right, Canada Matt on the board. All right, looks like um, three, nine, 10, 11, couple more folks maybe. Uh, Is Miley in yet? Um, Miley hasn't responded yet. Okay, so maybe, maybe Miley had to step away. That's okay. Um, is there anybody, anybody still trying to get in? Otherwise I'll get the game going. Diego? All right. Diego? Maybe is Cav? I, I thought, figured that was Kavanaugh. Oh, okay. Oh, he's still trying. Okay, good, good. Come on, Diego. We will wait for you. Yeah. You got this. All right. How's the sound? How's the level? Can you guys hear the background music? No. Oh. Hear you, no background music. How's that? Did it come in at all? No. Nope. Nothing? Mm. Okay. I thought I shared my sound. Make sure to do it on the next round. All right. Diego. We'll give him a few more minutes. Um, let's see. Is there anything we can help you out with, Diego? All right. You can talk to us if you need to. Yeah, feel free to unmute. Uh, yeah, sorry. I was uh, trying to to join um, with the cell phone, but I uh, I I, uh, I can't. <laughs> oh. I'm trying now with the PC. Uh, okay. Yeah. If, if, you, if you. Yeah. Go ahead. 
uh, yeah, uh, if you can send the link uh, by chat, uh, please. It's right ah, there. That would be nice. Sure. I don't. I'm not sure. I'm not yep. sure that I that that I enter the right place. Okay. <laughs> oh. Um, I don't. Here, let's see. Let me try to get the actual link in the chat for you. Here we go. Good call. All right. There you go. Links in the chat. So hopefully that works. Let's see, hi Tom. We're just trying. We're doing the practice round. Um, feel free to unmute tonight. Uh, the. Um, Website again is www.kahoot.it. Uh, you'll see the game pin here on the Zoom screen is 4407817. Uh, looks like, yeah, it looks like we did lose a couple folks. Janie, I'm not sure who jumped off. Um, there we Mark go, Diego. Work. Good job. I'm ready. Yes, I'm, your, I'm ready. All right, cool. Um, Mark disappeared from the Kahoot. Uh, Janie, did you jump in the cahoot? There you are. Okay, cool. Okay. I think, yeah, Mark's there. Um, Tom, are you jumping in? Right in Attempting to do so, I'm ready to figure out where on the page I click to enter the pin. Oh. Can I figure that out. Is it play? Let's click on play. Okay. One thing. Make sure you're on kahoot.it and not kahoot.com. Correct. Oh. That's Yep. Okay. Yep. I'll go there. Oh no, that is where it took me. I typed, typed in kahoot.com and it sent me to kahoot.it, so yep. it's all good. Cool. All right. Woohoo. <laughs> all right. We should, we should point out that trash talking is fine in this. <laughs> it is, and, yeah. Yep. And if and if you have disagreements about the correct answer to the question and you answered it wrong that's tough it is but i do have i do have links and receipts so saved all the receipts <laughs> all right tom there you are all right i think we're all in let's get going um i'm gonna go ahead and start the game here we go practice round test all right here we go. So, first question is, many questions will be multiple choice. Be the fastest person to pick the correct answer for the most points. Got it? So your answers are, what, um, got it, or nope. And you'll see on your phone or your playing piece the same colors as the answers on the screen. So you just wanna tap that answer as fast as you can and once everybody answers, we'll see. Dun, da, da, da. Got it. Um, good job, everyone who chose got it. <laughs> All right. And Veviv takes the lead with Dan following right behind in second and Mark coming in third. Way to go, folks. Here we go. Next question. All right. So what is this an image of? Hmm. Is it the Caribbean? Or is it the Caribbean? I don't know. Uh, a big city, pizza, or the BNW, Pacific Northwest. All right, we've got 10 answers, waiting for a couple more. Hmm. Well, all right, for those of you that responded the PNW, way to go. Looks like everybody who responded got it. Great job. Uh, Canada Matt comes in, take it in the third spot. Way to go. All right, uh, while we're here, does anybody have any questions so far before we move on to the next round? Um, I'll say, uh, Steven, welcome. We're just getting going with trivia. We're currently in the test round, so if you'd like to join, you'll see at the bottom right, uh, you go to kahoot.it on your phone or tablet and type in the game pin, which is in the bottom right. So. All right, we're gonna move on to the next test question. All right, so what color is the sky on most days in most places? 
Is it yellow? Is it red? Blue? Or green? <laughs> there we go. Good job, everyone. All right. Who, who? Somebody's in a red sky day. That's cool. Red sky at night, sailor's delight. All right, Veviv, you're on fire. Way to go, bud. Okay. Woohoo. True or false? Uh, fact. Questions may also be true or false. Hint, this is true. <laughs> Again, practice round. So just want to make sure everybody's getting it. Way to go, everybody, for getting that correct answer. And Veviv is just on fire tonight. Way to go. Uh, Dan, C Canada Matt, you guys holding down top three. Tom S. and Gary still rounding out the top five. Way to go, everybody. All right. True or false? All the questions seem so easy. Will it be like this the whole game? Uh, is that true or false? Hmm. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's false. It's going to get harder. <laughs> so should run the gamut on everybody's uh, uh, knowledge. Dan, way to go. Taking the lead. Feviv, where'd you go, bud? Okay. Um, here we go. The <laughs> All right. Here. Uh, what uh, what is happening in this video? Uh, dogs are barking. No, go for it. Fish are swimming, monkeys are climbing, or lions are roaring. There you go. Fish are swimming. <laughs> nice. All right, guys. Tom, you're on fire. Way to go. All right. Last question. Now that you've had a few practice questions, are you ready to play? I don't know. Yes, let's do this. Not at all. Where am I? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> uh, yes. Well, somebody is holding out. That's okay. All right, let's do this. All right, everybody. Good job. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a moment while I get the next game up. Now that Wait, we, did... we don't get to see who won. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> I jumped. I got a little excited there. Here we go. Okay. Given that this those is the were best all non, part. Yeah, given, this is the best part. <laughs> given that those were all non-audio questions. I know. So here we go. Here's the podium. Number three, Thomas. Way to go, Tom. Coming in second, we've got Canada Matt. And coming in first, dun da 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 and him. <laughs> with non-audio <Yay>. questions <laughs> all right runners up gary and mark that's awesome so uh now that we've gone through around that might have just been the the battle of the isp speeds true <laughs> that is that is part of it too <laughs> so and some of them i had to tap three times before mm. they registered oh yeah it's you know lick your finger first before oh <laughs> all right so with that does anybody have any more questions before we head into the actual game what's the number for the game all right so uh i'll give you the game pin um this one just ended so have you done this before? No. Ah, okay. Well, uh, are you using a cell phone or tablet as your game piece? I'm using my PC and I've got Kahoot up. Okay. Can you also see your Zoom? Yeah. You, yeah I, got two, need... I got two okay. monitors. Good. Perfect. Yeah. You'll want to see both at the same time. Okay. Well then, uh, you're jumping right in and no no way better than like trial by fire so okay so you'll, okay. Sl you'll show the key on the screen i'll just enter it yes and off we go. exactly and yep perfect okay all right so dun, 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 dun. let me get this next one up all right so i'm gonna share my screen again and share sound and share sound thank you so yes, sharing computer sound. I'm clicked that, and let's try it. All right. 
Can you guys hear music? Yes, we can hear it. All right. How's the level? All right. Good. Bing. Cool. Okay. Great. Oh, <laughs> my dog. My dog's joining us. <laughs> All right. So, uh, game pin for this one: four three nine three five nine zero. Got Gary and Steven coming in. Matt, welcome. All right, Vaviv, on the board. Diego, right on. Let's get in, Steven. One, one moment. All right, everybody's jumping in. This is awesome. Hey, Rosie. Come here, bud. Come here. Ready? Go get it. Okay. <laughs> Throw the dog a bone. <laughs> All right, everyone. Let's see. We've got 13 folks. I think that's who's playing. Are, are we waiting for anybody else? Anybody else still trying to get in? Bob, all right. We're waiting for you. We'll wait for you. No worries. Yep. Oh, hey. I had a question, Jess. Yeah. <clears throat> I noticed there was something about a streak. Do we get extra points if we have a, a winning streak with our answers? No, but you do get props. So. <laughs> I'll take it. Cool. <laughs> All right, Bob, anything we can help you with? <laughs> <laughs> cool. There you are. Awesome. Now, now we've got a full set of players. Let's do this. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Round one. Now, we're going to start with some general stuff. What year was AES founded? Was it 1936, 1944, 1948, or 1952? Hmm. New logo though. Oh, nice. For those guests, 1948. Good job. That is correct. Let's see who's on the board. David, way to go. Just just barely second gary mark dan matt way to go guys okay next question how many aes members are there currently worldwide is it eight thousand twelve thousand eighteen thousand or twenty thousand this is approximately yeah nice job folks twelve thousand that's approximately twelve thousand it's kind of amazing uh, let's see who jumped on the board that time. Oh, Gary down to fifth. Mark bumped up to second. Way to go, guys. Still same five on the board. And Matt, you bumped up too. All right. Nice job. Here we go. The speed of sound is variable, loud, quiet, or fixed. Hmm. Yep. I thought this one might be nice. There we go. Variable. It is variable. Lots of things play into the speed of sound. Matt, you're on fire. Way to go. Mark jumped into first. And Diego, on the board. Way to show up. Gary's moving up too. This is a hot game. All right. So at 20 degrees Celsius, 68 degrees Fahrenheit, the speed of sound in air is about 1,125 feet per second. 1,235 kilometers per hour, 767 miles per hour, or all of these. Who does math fast? Conversions. <laughs> all right, all of these. It is all of those. I know, it's the conversion thing. It's kind of a trick question, but have to throw in a few of those. Everybody got it right, technically. Sorry, <laughs> but it was all of them. Gary, way to take the lead, bud. You'd... Veviv, moving on up. Uh, David, Mark, and Matt still holding down top of five. Here we go. 
When the Krakatoa volcano erupted in August of 1883, how many times did the sound from the explosion circle the Earth? Once, twice, three times, or four times. Hmm. This was the loudest sound the Earth has ever made. Pretty incredible. It was four. Circled the Earth four times. Mind-blowing. Ah. Uh, yeah. Sound! Way to jump on the board! Number two! Way to go! All right. Four correct answers in a row. Gary keeping down first. Mark, Matt, and David holding down the rest of the top five. All right. So now we're into microphones. Uh, for best results, what type of direct box would you use for a crystal microphone feeding a low impedance input? Is it passive, active, either, or none? Hmm. <laughs> Thanks to Rick Chin for this question, by the way. All right, active, way to go. Most folks got that one. Very cool. That is the truth. Let's see, Bob, way to show up. All right, on the board. David moving into second, Mark and Sound holding the rest of the five down. <laughs> All right, next question. Besides condenser microphones, which of these things were developed or invented by George Newman? Neumann, sorry. <laughs> Is it a light bulb, leaded gasoline, rechargeable battery, or electrolytic capacitor? <laughs> All right. Thanks again to Rick Chin. Yes, it's a, actually a rechargeable battery. Kind of, I didn't, I didn't know that. I mean, he came up with some good questions, let me just say. All right, Mark, way to pop into second. David bumped down to third, but same five still holding it down. All right, guys, let's do this. What city was AKG founded in? Hmm, is it Salzburg, Innsbruck, Berlin, or Vienna? Hmm, the picture is a hint, I'll just say. I didn't do that for many of them, but... Ooh, all right, Vienna, way to go. Most folks got that one. Good job. Yep. Hey, Bob, way to go. Bumping up into fourth. Matt, on to back on the board. Mark and David holding down top two and three, and then Gary keeping up in the first place. You're kind of you're kind of leaving people in the dust there, Gary. Somebody's got to catch up to him. Come on, yeah. <laughs> it's that fast internet speed. Okay, what kind of microphone was used in telephones until the 1970s? Was it dynamic, condenser, carbon, or ribbon? Hmm, those old rotor phones. They were pretty heavy, if I remember correctly. <laughs> All right, Carbon, way to go, everybody who answered that question. That is true. Mark, you're on fire. It's four in a row. Everybody's holding down their place. Good job. All right, here we go. Microphone question. A common characteristic of a first-order cardioid microphone is non-directional pickup pattern, high impedance, limited frequency response, or low frequency boost when used close up. Hmm. First order cardioid. It's tricky. Yeah, way to go. Most folks got that too. It's true. Low frequency boost when used closed up. Close up. <laughs> Sound way to come back on the board. All right, David, you're on a hot streak. Gary holding down first. He's a champ. All right. Now we're getting into some classical questions. Beethoven conducted the premiere of his ninth symphony without hearing a single note. Is this true, false, what, or it depends? Hmm, <laughs> what? <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> yep, all right. It's true, it's true. He, he is a beast. What can we say? It's Beethoven. <laughs> All right, Matt, jump back into number five. Way to go. And uh, folks are on hot streaks. I like it. Good job, everyone. All right, Johann Sebastian Bach did not compose a single piece for the organ, harpsichord, piano, or violin. Hmm. 
I'll say there is a clue somewhere on the stamp, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> All right, it is a piano. Yeah, it's a different time period, and it's just not what he, you know, not his wheelhouse. So <laughs> good job, most folks got that. Um, David hopping into second. Mark bumping down to third. You guys are holding down the top five. Way to go. Okay, next question. How old was Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart when he wrote his first symphony? Was he seven, eight, nine, or ten? <coughs> yeah. Yeah, he was eight. It's amazing. Uh, most folks knew that, and good... Well, actually, it was a trick question, um, but <laughs> I I, uh, I see most folks got seven. It was a tricky question. So, and welcome Steve Turnage. I just want to mention, uh, we're just starting the first round. Um, please feel free to jump in on your uh, cell phone or tablet. Go to kahoot.it. The game pin is in the bottom right-hand corner. I'm just uh, gonna watch, but thank okay. you very much for the, the invite. Yeah, welcome. This is kind of casual, um, but challenging at the same time. So here we go. Bob, way to go. Jumping in second. Nice. Matt, you're on fire. All right, guys. Here we go. Next question. Which member of the Beatles has composed and released classical music on the side? Side hustle. Was it John Lennon? George Harrison? Paul McCartney? Or Ringo Starr? Hmm. Yeah, Paul McCartney. Way to go. Uh, he He's definitely got his side hustle on. And yeah, there we go. A little switcheroo, but everybody's still holding down the top five. Bob, you're on fire. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, back in last classical question of this round. What city is known as the classical music capital of the world? Is it Paris? Amsterdam, Berlin, or Vienna? Hmm. Yes, it is Vienna. That that uh, is definitely the hot spot. Um, and we still got the same five holding down the top. Gary, you're definitely on fire. Okay, here we go. Microphone questions. Uh, which or what microphone company did Benjamin? Bromsweger work for? Is it Sure Brothers, Electro Voice, Neumann, or Bayer? Hmm. Yes, it was the Sure Brothers. Ah, uh, good job, most of you. Um, good try for the rest of you. <laughs> Still, he changed his name to Ben Bauer. He did. Yeah. So that was a little tricky. Um, David, way to take over third. Dan M, you're back in the game. Right on. I don't see you on the board, but you're back. And that's good. Okay. Which of the following microphones will not emit sound when fed an audio signal? It's crystal, dynamic, variable reluctance, or carbon? Hmm. Will not emit sound. Hmm. I'm... Yeah, carbon. That was a tricky one. Um, but thanks to Rick Chin for that tough no. question. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Should we look and see what is, um, is anybody contesting this? Do we want to see what his yeah. link is? Okay. <laughs> Let's see here. I, I can't show you guys the answer, but I'll pop it up onto the screen here um, on my master question here. Doot, doot, doot. Ah, okay. Here's what he said. Uh, when fed an audio signal, only the carbon microphone will be silent. The rest will emit some sound because they are capable of being emitters as well as signal sources. So, yeah. Yeah, and... So if, if anybody else needs to contest it further, we'll have to go direct to the source next time we see Rick Chin. <laughs> so that means that it's not a speaker. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yep. 
Emit That's... was confusing. Mm-hmm. Ah. Okay. So let's see. David bumps into second. Micah, welcome to the board here. Bumping into fifth. All right, things are switching up a little bit. Here we go. Next question. A dynamic microphone is self-generating. Is this true? False. Does it matter? Is that legal? <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Hmm. What is in Rick Chin's brain? <laughs> All right, yes, way to go, folks. Yes, true. And he says, true, a dynamic microphone is a miniaturized version of a moving coil loudspeaker. Diaphragm motion causes the voice coil to move, cutting magnetic lines of force and generating electricity. Just so you know, I tapped true about 11 times and it never registered. Oh. Just FYI. Aww. I'm sorry, Jeannie. Maybe, Jeannie, do you have another way maybe of trying well i'm not gonna switch I, I not that i can switch to this quickly okay maybe for the next round because there's gonna be three rounds tonight so. i'm having that problem too with the with the touching but are you i could i could i have never i have never seen a dynamic microphone appear all by itself so <laughs> yeah i the, i hit I, is that legal <laughs> I th the thing is too is it connected to a load or not uh, it's sort of like does a tree make a generating what well, does yeah. a tree make that falls in the forest that no one's there around to hear or fall does it make a sound does a dynamic right. microphone that is not connected to who else wants anything? to know who wrote these does questions? it is it self-generating <laughs> i don't know an audio burn oh steve you're kind of cutting out a little bit there Sorry, I'm on my phone. If you do hook it up to an audio, it will work like a loudspeaker, but you'll probably... Oh, dear. Ah. Cut it, cutting out again, Steve, unfortunately. Oh, sorry about that. I'm outside of my deck. That's there why we my go. Dim. Is that better? I'm trying to get into my Wi-Fi, but yeah. yeah. If you connect it to an audio source, it will make sound. I found that out the hard way as a kid when I plugged my dynamic recorder microphone into the headphone jack and Lo and behold, it worked oh. like a loudspeaker, Oops. and I showed it to all my friends and said, let me turn this up. Uh, oh, no. It was gone. Aww. Aww. Join me sometime on Physics and Microphones for more Aww. interesting <laughs> stories in that same vein. <laughs> cool. It's all good all right. set up and keep listening. <laughs> no worries. Welcome. It's Welcome, all good. Steve. Yep. All right. Next question. We got a couple more of this round. So the RCA 77DX is an example of a crystal microphone, dynamic microphone, ribbon microphone, or controlled reluctance microphone. Hmm. Interesting. The RCA dog is iconic though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, way to go. Most folks got that one. Ribbon microphone, yep, sure is. It is a ribbon with a variable pattern by a piece of metal that moves behind the ribbon. Well, we'll have to take it up with Rick Chin again <laughs> if we need to. Uh, it is a ribbon microphone, but you can control the pattern by moving a, a baffle behind it with a little mechanical lever in the base of the microphone. Cool. Don't give away answers to future questions. <laughs> Sorry about yeah. that. I'll just shut up and be quiet. <laughs> All right. Micah, you're on fire, bud. Way to go. In the fourth spot. Bob on the board. All right. Guys, you're holding down the top five. It's it's getting really close. Last question of this round. What directional pattern does the RCA 44 microphone exhibit? Is it omnidirectional, cardioid, bidirectional, or A and B. Hmm. What's A and what's B? Omnidirectional and cardioid. Mm-hmm. Yep. Bidirectional. Who knew? <laughs> Ten of you. Ten of you knew. <laughs> Which is the inherent inherent classic pattern of all ribbon microphones. Because so of the way the ribbon mic is designed. All right, here we've got the podium. We've got dun -da -da -da, 
Gary Louie coming in number one. Woohoo! All right, David coming Yay. in number two. Mark, Yay. you came in third. Uh, runners up, Micah and was it Matt? I think. Yes. Okay. Way to go. Um, let me write this down quick because I will be uh, sending you your official uh, winner certificates in the email that will be designed me, specially. Yes? Please give me a second to grab my, t my tablet. You Come got it. Back. Okay. All right. So round one. And we will do, um, uh, I'll be doing certificates for, oh, whoa. Go back to podium. <laughs> Dun, da, da, da. That showed the results. That showed how many percentage of us answered the questions right. Oh yeah, there were there is a bit more insights if we want to get in. I notice I've got like the the Cadillac version. I upgraded, cool. so there's a lot more bells and whistles under the hood that I haven't even begun to explore that I'm excited to find out more about. So. Um, yeah, this is a really great platform for this kind of stuff. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen just for a moment. Well, here, just since we're here kind of waiting for a second, I'll just show you what it looks like. So, yeah, you can see um, there's some really difficult questions, which is nice. Um, you know, well played, 54% correct. Um, so this is showing the hardest questions in order? Yeah. So 13% answered the Krakatoa one correctly. 20% mm -hmm. answered those other two correctly. Okay, cool. Yep, yep. So, and and I guess, yeah, I guess we're going to, we can see a full report. Um, oh, well, we. I don't want to, do you guys want to see the yeah, full report? They apparently don't want you to do that. Yeah. Don't so do it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I, I, I'm, uh. Uh, gonna cool. stop sharing the screen for a moment while I get round two up on the board. So, all right. And anybody that wants to play, feel free to jump in. Again, uh, if you just joined us, you're gonna wanna use um, a tablet or a phone if you can as your game player. And then you're gonna want to go to www.kahoot.it. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again. We're going to go on to round two. All right. Give me a second. I'm still getting into my tablet you, here. You got it. Thank Take you. all the time you need, Janie. Yep. Um, so can everybody see this? Can you hear any music? Yep. Yes. Is this going to be a new pin, Jess? Yes. So this is a new pin. So you're going to want to enter two, three, four nine nine seven six and getting folks on the board if anybody has any questions or running into anything feel free to speak up um trash talking is okay <laughs> one uh, side benefit of this game is that it's good to discover who you shouldn't argue with <laughs> yeah <sighs> All right. Looks like, oh, Diego dropped out. Okay. Well, that's okay. All right. So we've got 12 players. Um, let's see. Are we waiting for... Got Janie coming on. So just give a few more moments. Did anybody need a, a quick beverage refill or take a sip? I... I poured sparkling water in my wine glass. I'm not getting drunk yet until after. <laughs> Just a I, little. I am going to go get Good a refill real quick. All right, cool. I also want to say, Jess, this is a lot of fun. This is Cool. Great. Yay. Yes. Yeah. A lot of fun. Thanks. Cool. Thanks for being here, everybody. Yay, Janie. Way to go. Mark. <laughs> all right. Uh, now it says your network is slow, so you might experience delays. Uh, That's nice. Jeez. You could have you could have um, your phone and your tablet going and see which one goes faster. Oh, I can do <laughs> I can get on, in on them both. Well, just choose a different name, but that's gonna give so. you that's kind of like cheating, though, right? Because then you got two games going. 
I don't know. I I uh, didn't even think that through, but here, wait. Diego fell out, and now okay. he's joining again. Oh, good. Okay, perfect timing. Coming back. So good. yeah, let's let's let him. Mhm. Mm get in. Cool. All right, welcome back. Oh, connecting. Cool. All right, welcome back, Diego. We're just about to start round two of three. Uh, so if you can see the game pin on the board is two, three, four, nine, nine, seven, six. We'll just give it a few more minutes. Mm. No worries, Diego. Thanks for coming back. Oh, Buford T joined us. That must be somebody's superhero name. <laughs> All right. So, Janie, you are going to try both for this round? Yeah. And just see what works? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, everybody knows if Janie ends up in first place for first and second place, then we know something's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> okay. But it'll, it'll be good to test because I think um, that was happening in TTT for you, too. And so, yeah, I think it was. Yeah. So, all right. Let's see. All right. We got Diego. Is there anybody else? Is everybody back from getting a beverage? Yes. Okay. Great. Here we go. Dun -da -da -da. <laughs> Round two. All right. So, according to the IFPI, the global recorded music market grew by what percent in 2020? Is it 8.6, 7.4, 6.8, or 5.2? It did grow though, which is amazing. Even during a pandemic, the global recorded music grew. Ah, oh, most of you got that one. Good job. Well, a chunk of a good chunk of you anyway. It was pretty even across the board. It was 7.4. Um, mostly due to streaming. So let's see who got that one. Micah, nice. Steve T on the board. Way to go. Sound and Bob and Janie. Which, whoa, hello. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, this it. is good. This is good. Things are happening. All right. Next question. Figures released this year in IFPI's Global Music Report show total revenues for 2020 were U.S. $12.8 billion, $31.4 billion, $8.2 billion, or $21.6 billion. Total revenues, and this is globally for recorded music. Hmm. It's like most folks have answered. Yes. Nice job. $21.6 billion. So the music industry, the recorded industry, is still on the rise. We're, you know, just in this incredible time. So, all right, Dan M., welcome to the top five. Bob bumping up into second. Steve holding it down at third. And JD coming in at fourth. Way oh to go. <laughs> yeah, this is this is cool. This is happening. Okay. Uh, blank was once again the fastest growing region globally in 2020. Now we're still talking global recorded music. Yeah, okay. So was it um, Africa and Middle East, Australasia, Latin America, or Asia? And Asia does not include Japan. Japan is its own region. So just to clarify, it's a little tricky. Yeah, Latin America is the answer, actually. I know, the Asia thing, because if you had Japan in with Asia, it would have been... And so, sorry, that was a little bit of a trick question, but everybody learned something. And this, this is, this, yeah, go ahead. This platform doesn't allow you to change your vote after you learn new information. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Bob, way to go. You're on fire. Nice a work. Of, a couple of questions ago, I was pounding on the wrong answer repeatedly and wouldn't take it. And I finally oh. gave up and randomly chose one of the others. <laughs> It was the right answer. Nice. So, you know, anybody, anybody could get to the top just by pounding away at the game. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, nice job, Bob. You're starting to just. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you my pinball machine story. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, next question. According to Polestar, 
the global live events industry lost more than U.S. what in 2020 due to the pandemic? So now this is live events industry total around the globe. Was it 30 billion, 60 billion, 20 billion, or 50 billion? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. It was 30 billion. I know. And that's, yeah, again, global and whew, um, pretty, in, pretty incredible. Uh, so let's see. Micah, nice work jumping into first. Way to pull out the lead. Thomas on the board. Welcome. All right. Here we go. Next question. Dun, 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 dun. Which social media app recently announced that they're adding spatial audio effects for all users? Hmm, is it TikTok, Clubhouse, MySpace, or Twitter? These are spatial audio effects. So, hmm. Yeah, it's Clubhouse, actually. Uh, they are an audio only app and uh, available Android and Apple and they're making moves. So something to keep posted on, I guess, or check out if you haven't yet. Um, yeah. So now we're heading back into another microphone section. Let's see. Oh, Vevev, welcome to the f top five. All right, bud. Micah holding down first. Uh, Tom S, way to bump into fourth. Here we go. Steve T at third, holding it down. All right. In 1970, where was the Electro Voice factory located? Is it Chicago, Illinois, Elkhart, Indiana, Buchanan, Michigan, or Anaheim, California? Hmm. Is the disco ball a clue? <laughs> Buchanan, Michigan. Yeah, nice job. Most of you got that one. So... Oh my gosh, Greg Dixon flying into first place from nowhere. Dan Mortensen screaming into second. Micah's bumping down to third. Steve T's still holding down his place on top five. That was wild. That was a wild round. Way to go, guys. Okay, here we go. Condenser microphones require polarizing voltage, impedance translator, conductive diaphragm, or all of the above. Hmm. I am currently using a condenser microphone. Yes, all of the above. Way to go, most of you. Yes. Gotta love them. Dan M, way to take first. Greg, bump down to fifth, buddy. I, ah. I answered the question as soon as I saw polarizing voltage. I said, yes, polarizing ah. voltage. I yeah. It. And then you kept on reading the answers, and I was like, oh. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> I know, it'll get you. All right, here we go. Next question. Dun, 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 dun. A dynamic microphone is an analog of a permanent magnet loudspeaker, crystal earphone, planner loudspeaker, or none of the above. Hmm. Thanks to Rick Chin for this question, by the way. Yeah, permanent magnet loudspeaker. Way to go, most of you. All right, let's see who got that one. Yeah, Gary L, back on the board. Welcome back to round two, Gary. Um, Steve, hopefully we'll see you back in the top five. Greg, way to bump up into fourth. All right, guys. Dan Mortensen, holding down first. What operating principle does the AKG C414 use? Is it condenser, dynamic, ribbon, or crystal? Hmm. I like that mic. Yeah, condenser. All right. Nice job. Most of you got that one. That was a speed thing, too. Everybody's holding down their place. All right. Dan and Micah, you guys are neck and neck. I mean, I it took could, a screenshot well, of that to prove it later. <laughs> cool. All right. What operating principle does the Neumann U47 use? Is it condenser, dynamic, ribbon, or crystal? Hmm. Yes, condenser. All right. That was like a kind of a trick question because it's like two in a row of the same answer. But thanks to Rick Chin. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Oh, Micah. See, neck and neck. 
Greg, you're bumping into third. Gary and Bob, you're still holding it down. Dan, you guys, I mean, it, it could go any way at this point. I mean, I'm just blown away. Pins and needles over here. All right, we're going with, oh, 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 ah, ah. How do I, okay. This one, I'm just going to give you the answer because I messed up. And the answer is, ah, <laughs> um, oh my gosh, uh, Bob Dylan. Play the song, play the song. Once upon a time, you dressed so fine through the bums of time in your prime, didn't you? Oh, People yeah, that's you definitely all. Dylan. You're bound to fall. Yeah, okay. So, so I surprised myself with this one. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> this next, the next four questions um, I'm going to read lyrics of a song in monotone from, it's going to be a song from Rolling Stone's top 500 greatest songs of all time, uh, uh, 2010 version. Um, so here we go. <laughs> you have to guess who sang this, who, who the artist was. All right. Next one. Let me get myself ready. Da, da, da. Okay. Here we go. Let's see who got that one. Oh, yeah, Bob. Way to go. Taking in third, Greg. <laughs> holding it down. Still in the top five. Way to go. Sorry about that. Here we go. Okay. Which song is this? At first, I was afraid. I was petrified. Kept thinking I could never live without you by my side. But then I spent so many nights thinking how you did me wrong. And I grew strong. And I learned how to get along. And so... You're back from outer space. I just walked in to find you here with that sad look upon your face. Yes, Glory Gator, I will survive. <laughs> nice job. Yep. All right, let's see who let's see what's going on. Matt, way to go back on the board, buddy. Nice. All right. Uh, everybody else holding it down. Still really close. It could go any way at this point. Okay. Next one. Here we go. Oh, it's nine o'clock on a Saturday. The regular crowd shuffles in. There's an old man sitting next to me, making love to his tonic and gin. He says, son, can you play me a memory? I'm not really sure how it goes, but it's sad and it's sweet. And I knew it complete when I wore a younger man's clothes. Yes, Billy Joel. <laughs> when I was younger, I got it confused with Elton John, too. So I'm with you on the Elton John answer, folks. So <laughs> um, definitely not uh, the other two, though. All right, Matt, making waves, bumping into fourth. Greg knocked down to fifth. Still holding it down, though. Top three, Micah and Dan. I mean, gosh, you guys are super close. Okay. Whew. This next one. Here we go. Two more of these lyrics. This one. Billy Ray was the preacher's son, and when his daddy would visit, he'd come along. Uh, when they gathered round and started talking, that's when Billy would take me walking. Uh, out through the backyard, we'd go walking. Then he'd look in my eyes, and Lord knows, to my surprise, Yes, Dusty Springfield, son of a preacher man. Whoop, whoop. Most of you got that one. Very cool. This is classic. Dan, taking over the lead. You're on fire. Dun, dun, dun. Come back. Three in a row. All right. This is the last, last lyric one. <laughs> and it's going to be uh, tricky. It's not a clue, by the way. <laughs> All right. I said, a hip hop, the hippie, the hippie, the hip hip hoppa, you don't stop the rock. It to the bang bang boogie, say up jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie, the beat. Now you hear this is, er, is not a test. I'm rapping to the beat and me, the groove and my friends. Yeah, woohoo, Sugar Hill Gang. I mean, classic. Um, Way to go. Not, most of you got that one, too. All right. Who's back? Oh, Matt and Greg bumping up. Bob holding down top five still, but you're still on the board, buddy. So keep up. Keep up. You got this. Do do your thing, and we'll hear your wizardry after. 
All right. Next next section is uh, back to microphones. You can tell this is the, the thread that keeps it all together. What operating principle does the Shure SM57 use? Condenser, dynamic, ribbon, or crystal? Yeah. Yep. It's, oh, man, uh, I think I clicked the wrong button. Oh, no, <laughs> oh, no Greg. I hate it when that ah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, oh. It's dynamic, yes. Yeah, that 57. I mean, gosh, you can pretty much use it on just about anything. But let's see. Steve T back on the board. Welcome back, buddy. Bob bumping up into fourth. Dan, you're you're on fire completely with 12 in a row. This is incredible. Wow. So unbelievable. Yeah, seriously. Um, but Micah is right there on your on your tail. So could go either way. I just Couple got the creatures questions. creatures San Juan wrong. <laughs> 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 oh. And you work at a religious school. What's the deal? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. All right. Well. It's all right. See, everybody's learning stuff. It's cool. <laughs> what is Mr. Schur's first name? Is it Isidore, Herman, Ben, or Sydney? Isidore? Isidore. Hmm. Is a is a what? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that was a tricky one. It's Sydney. Yes. To the four of you that got that one, great job. Steve T. <laughs> Coming up into third, Micah took over first. I'm telling you, I mean, less than 100 points between the top two. It's amazing. Matt nice and Bob. Nice going, Micah. Yep. Way to go. I'm coming for you. <laughs> A couple more questions. All right. What was the model number of the SM57 before it was known as the SM57? Is it 55, 545? 330 or 515? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know this one. Aha! 545! Nice job, most of you. I mean, that was another uh, could have gone either way. <laughs> but there was just one answer. So, Dan, nice job back in first. You two are like totally right there. A um, little bit more of a, of a streak, but Matt, nice job bumping into third. Top five, holding it down. Bob, you're still there. I see you on number five there. Way to go. <laughs> All right. 19. Two more questions. Who invented the condenser capacitor microphone? The Ben Bauer, Eugene Bayer, E.C. Went, A.G. Bell. Hmm. Capacitor. It was E.C. Yeah, I know. That, that one surprised me, too. Thank you to Rick Chin again. <laughs> and let's see, Mark, welcome back. Uh, holding down the five with five answers in a row. Uh, Dan, you're still hanging out in the lead. We got one question left. It could Only still because go. Micah got it wrong, too. Must have been. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it could it, really all five. It could go any way. Um, here we go. Last question. You ready? All right, let's do this. Whew. Many Sennheiser condenser microphones use this method to convert the change of capacitance into audio. Is it amplitude mod modulation, frequency modulation, variable resistance, or none of the above? Hmm. Yeah, frequency modulation to the two of you that got that one correct. I know. <laughs> Great job, by the way. Um, that was a tough one. Let's see who made it to the podium. Dun -da -da -da, Matt in third place. Nice job. Way to go. Number two, Micah. Oh, my gosh. So close. And first place, we've got dun -da -da -da, Dan Mortensen. Way to go, Dan. And we've Again. got Steve T and Mark as runners up. You guys did phenomenal. Let me just say, um, I'm Again, going to go only ahead because those guys got that one wrong too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes that's the way the cookie crumbles. It's a tough one. Yeah, I'm writing down the ans uh, the top three here. You will all get certificates for cookies. Round two. <laughs> 
and let's see it looks like we've got a new person joining us welcome and we are into trivia we've just gotten through the second round this was a difficult one this was a little more difficult than the last time getting a little more challenging all right so i'm going to go ahead and stop sharing um and Janie, how did you feel? Which one worked better for you? Well, they both worked this time. <laughs> okay. Go figure, right? Oh, my gosh. All right. That's well, because I'm... having two at once lowers the impedance. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. We're heading into our final round. Now, for those of you uh, who just joined us, you're gonna want to uh, keep Zoom up and then use either tablet or phone if you can to uh, go to kahoot.it and you'll enter in this game pin that I'm about to share right now. If you have any questions, please speak up. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again. Sharing my computer sound. All right. All right, here we go. Can everybody see this? We've got, okay, so. All right, everybody's jumping in. Oh, all right. Let's see who else is still coming. Diego, woohoo, JD. Okay. And I think I think that's everyone. Unless um Paul, are you joining us? Just a one. Okay, sounds good. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. First of all, did anybody need a, a quick um, beverage? Break. Cheers. By the way. <laughs> Cheers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here we go. The final round. All right. So we're going to start off um, with a round of questions from Dr. Mike Metesky. Classical music. Here we go. Bum, bum, bum. First question. What piece of music contains more dynamic range? Is it Gregorian chant? John Cage's four, meter, four minutes, 33 seconds. The Beatles yesterday or Beethoven's Eroica symphony? Eroica? Eroica. Eroica. Thank you. Eroica. There we go. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I uh, <laughs> didn't did get a chance to verbalize these. I may have mispronounced a couple things, so don't mind me. Uh, great job to the 13 of you. Let's see who's on the board. Veviv, all right, first place. Matt, Micah, Gary, and Greg rounding out the top five. We got 19 questions to go. It's anybody's game at this point. Here we go. Why was Chopin's Minute Waltz so named? It took him a minute to compose it. It should be played in one minute. He loved the very minute he completed it, or it was short. <laughs> it was short. All right. Yeah, this is an interesting one, but uh, that's that's the reason. Um, let's see. All right, Gary flying into first place. Mark on the board into fourth. Veviv, hope to see you back. Everybody else, way to hold down top five. Here we go. <laughs> was that the minute waltz or the minute waltz? Really, that would have that would have influenced my answer. Uh, how could anyone really know the answer to that? <laughs> Here we go. If a bass trombone can output forty acoustical watts, is that measured at a distance of one yard, one ear of corn, a furlong, or a fence? Hmm. <laughs> it's one yard. Yeah, nice job, most of you. Okay, I mean, 
Let's see who's up. Oh my gosh, everything's changed. All right, Mark flying into first. Greg bumping up into third. Vev, welcome back. Micah and Gary holding it down in the top five. Here we go. Still anybody's game. The engineer who recorded much West Coast jazz was Peter Bartuk, Roy Dunan, Arthur Godfrey, or James Clerk Maxwell. Hmm. Yeah, Roy. Does anybody know Roy? That'd be cool. Cool. That's awesome. He came to some meetings of ours, I think. Cool. Man, what an incredible thing to capture, too. So, great job, most of you. All right. Gary, nice job. Bumping up into first. Janie, <laughs> on the board. Dan, <laughs> welcome. Here we go. Nice. Greg, still on there. Same with you, Mark. Again, can be anybody's game at this point. Here we go. The representation of the analysis of a tone into its constituent harmonics is called a spectrum, frequency, timber, or vibrato. Hmm. Harmonics. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Well, yes, there you go. Nice job. It is a spectrum. <sighs> so... I would just add that it's not just the harmonics, but also inharmonic frequencies as well. Good point. All right. And I pressed it, and it didn't press. <laughs> oh, geez. Sorry, Jeannie. Yeah, Your impedance that. is too high, Jeannie. I guess. <laughs> All right. Tom S., welcome to the top five. Good to see you back. Micah, welcome back to the top five as well. Again, this could be anybody's game. It's still early. All right, here we go. Back into microphone world. Question six. Which of the following microphones were made by Sennheiser? SM58, 664, U47, MD421. Hmm. It's kind of a trick question. There we go. Yeah, MD421. Most of you got that one. This is great. Greg D, welcome back to the top five. Micah, oh, maybe we'll be back. Everybody else, way to hold it down. But it's still really close. I mean, super close. Okay, which of the following microphones was nicknamed the Buchanan Hammer? Is it the MD421, 664, 77DX, or the RE15? Yeah, 664. Nice job. I, I, again, could have been uh, anybody's guess, but you guys got it, so good job. <laughs> Greg D, you're on fire. Back in the game, three in a row. All right. Gary, holding down first. I mean, you might end up, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm not going to say any more, but again, um, way to keep up on the top five. Could be anybody's game. Here we go. <laughs> this is exciting. It's very close. Okay. Which of the following attributes does not apply to the RE20? Wide frequency response, proximity effect, no proximity effect, or low impedance? Hmm. RE20. Hmm. 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 Yeah. Proximity effect. This is true. Uh... Let's see what's going on here. Gary, still keeping in first. Dan M on fire. You've got the highest answer streak of six. Way to go. It's awesome. Everybody else is on the move. But everybody's in. I mean, look at that. It's so close. It's within like 300 points. So, all right, you guys, neck and neck. Here we go. What did B&K do to convince customers that studio versions of the B&K measurement mics could withstand studio usage? Hmm. So this is sales reps. What did they do to prove their microphones were worthy? Used one to play drums? Dropped it. Stirred a glass of water with the acoustical end? Or none of the above? Stirred a glass of water. Oh I know. God. Yeah. So Rick Chin witnessed this at a trade show. And obviously was blown away. And um, never forgot it. So it's a pretty cool way to convince people that, you know, your mic's going to hold up in the studio. I've so, seen an SM58 so, dipped in a 
in a uh, glass of beer before, <laughs> but uh, never a B&K measurement mic dipped in water. <laughs> Several of us who knew the B&K sales, uh, sales rep uh, with us. <laughs> awesome. Well, Tom S., you are on fire, my friend. You've got the highest answer streak currently of seven and number two on the board, flying into second. Um, Micah jumping back up on the top five, number four, Greg D, Dan M, rounding it out, Gary. I mean, you're you're first, but it's close. Tom's coming for you. All right, <laughs> here we go. Number 10, halfway through. What transducer principle does an electret microphone use? Is it dynamic, electrostatic, piezo, or variable reluctance? Hmm. Yes, electrostatic. Uh, way to go, eleven of you. Nice job. Oh my gosh, Tom! Look at you flying into first, coming out of nowhere. Gary's been challenged. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is exciting. Dan M bumping up into fourth. Greg D third. Micah fifth. And again, we're within like a thousand points. Anybody's game. Anybody. Ten questions I'm, left. I'm one point ahead of Micah. That's amazing. <laughs> that is, I think, the closest I've ever seen things before. I was just a little so. too slow on that one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Next question. The use of sound to evoke emotion, reflect mood, and underscore actions in plays and dances began in prehistoric times the Middle Ages, the Renaissance, or the modern era. Write it into a sound design section. Yeah, prehistoric times. This is like part of humanity. So um, nice job, six of you. Let's see. This is changing things up. Dan flying into third. Mike and Greg switching things around. Tom holding down first. Gary close behind. I mean, within 50 points this is this is incredible okay good job here we go fully fun what can you do with coconuts for foley artists what would you do with coconuts would you make door knocking sounds crushing sounds baseball bat sounds or walking horse sounds and these are what are coconuts most used for in foley yes the walking horse clop 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 so you don't need an actual horse pretty fun uh it's amazing. Foley artists, I think that would be such a cool job. I just think they must have so much fun every day. <laughs> Micah, nice job. Highest answer streak currently of five, flying into third. Again, right there, neck and neck. I mean, gosh, Greg D, number five, way to go. All right. Uh, next is another Foley question. So, Foley fun. What is fried bacon sound used for? Is it... Stadium audience sounds, pouring rain sounds, car wheels on gravel, or none of these. Hmm. Oof. I mean, gosh, that sound is the pouring rain sound. Yes. Um, nice job, 11 of you. Uh, it's kind of amazing that that's what that is, but it works. And things are switched up. Oh my gosh. Sorry for the clap. Uh, that was super loud. <laughs> I got excited there. Um, Gary flying into first. Dan M holding second. Greg D at third. Tom S fourth. And Micah fifth. Wow. Again, Janie, you just hit answer streak of four. You're on fire. Oh my gosh. This is, uh, this is really close. We got seven questions left. Here we go. All right. The scientific study of sound perception and audiology how humans perceive various sounds is called psychophysics, music psychology, psychoacoustics, or cognitive neuroscience of music. Hmm. Yes, nice job, psychoacoustics. Yes, it is. Kind of amazing. Everybody just got that one. That's kind of a, but holding down your positions. I like it. I like it. Everybody's right in there. And again, super close. Could be anybody's game. Here we go. The first film with Dolby sound was A Clockwork Orange in 1971, Kalan in 1974, 
Listomania in 1975 or Stars Born in 1976? Hmm. Yes, a clockwork orange. Now, this was kind of a tricky question because all of these movies did incorporate some form, newer form of Dolby um, as they were advancing and progressing, but it was a clockwork orange that was the very first. So, nice job. That's a dirty trick. <laughs> it's like somewhere in the back of your mind you filed things and it's like oh yeah it rings a bell but it's like oh yeah wait no yeah so <laughs> well, everybody's still right in there i like it and janie nice job answer streak of six okay here we go next question back into microphone land to round it out what is din 45 596 a german penal code Standard describing phantom powering, standard for dynamic microphones, or none of the above? This is a Rick Chin question. Yeah, standard describing phantom powering. So, let's see what's going on here. Oh, switching it up a little, but Gary, you're on fire. Five correct answers in a row, holding down first. Tom S. slides into third. Greg D. goes down to fourth. Mark, you're coming in at fifth. I like it. I mean, again... We've still got four more questions, so let's see what happens next. Can a Sennheiser MKH 41.5T microphone <laughs> be powered by P48 powering? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Busted. Yes? No? Good question. Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's no it, yeah i know uh so no sorry i don't even know what that microphone is but i got it <laughs> I right anybody contribute so the, the hint what is it the yeah hint let's is see that it has the t at the end and there's a, a type of powering well, scheme called t power. t power so that was really what gave it away to me yeah wow uh, here um uh, can I just copy guessed. this? Yeah, here, here's, here's the link from from Rick Chin on that one. I just popped it into the chat. So if anybody wants to look up more about that, um, but uh, let's see here. Oh, Greg D coming up into third. Micah back on the board. Welcome back. Just, just in the nick of time towards the end. Thomas holding down number four. Bob, where'd you go? Jeez. All right. <laughs> All right. Next question. Got a few more. Who invented the electret microphone? Was it Lou Burroughs, James West and Garrett Sessler, Ben Bauer, or Akio Morita? Mori. Yeah. Yeah. Three of you got that. Nice. James West and Gerhard Sessler. I didn't know that either. So. Nice question from Rick. He's sure he he had some good ones in here, but everybody's holding it down. Gary, God, nice job at first. Dan second. Greg D at third. Tom S at fourth, and Mike at fifth. Janie back on with the answer streak of three. You're on fire too. Here we go. Couple more questions. Which microphone depends on the VF14 tube? Is this EV664? Neumann U47, Neumann U67, or Alltech Coke bottle? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the U47. <laughs> nice job, 10 of you. Yep, let's see. Oh, Greg and Tom switching it up. Tom moves up into third. Greg is into fourth. <clears throat> da, da, da. Dan's got me by a point. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and look at that, everybody. It's, I mean, Gary, you're kind of... Pulling out far ahead in the lead there, but Dan, Tom, yeah, Gary, Greg, and Micah. Gary's untouchable. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this could go. I mean, the four of you, I mean, and anybody else close, we'll see. This is the last question. Ready? Here we go. Okay. <sighs> <clears throat> Which microphone depends on the EF86 6267 tube? Get out of here. Yeah, AKG C12A, Neumann KM84. Yeah, you, Dan, just think about who's who's, uh, who's writing these questions. Yep, <laughs> it's the U67. Nice job, four of you. I know those were some tough ones to round it out. 
Rick Chin Jeez. really, really dug in there. So let's see who made the podium. Number three, coming in, Dan Mortensen. Way to go. Nice job. Micah, number two. You flew into second. Oh, my gosh. Yay. And then I, I beat Dan. Nice job. I know. Yay. Gary, number one. Way to go, yay. Gary. Woo -woo. Yay, Tom yay, S. and Greg yay, D. Yay. runners up. I love it. You guys did so great. All right. I'm going to write these down really quick. Okay, and, question uh, 21 next time needs to be, what's this 12th <laughs> listing on page 456 of the New York phone book? <laughs> right? It doesn't oh matter because Gary, Gary will still get it right. So. <laughs> <laughs> He'll still get it right somehow. <laughs> yeah, All I've right. been cheating. Well, <laughs> well uh, I just want to thank everybody for playing trivia tonight. And I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Um, but, uh, this has been a blast and, um, bravo, I hope everyone Jess. else thinks, yeah, I hope everyone's had a good Jess. time. Yes, bravo. Well, well done. Well done. Lots of fun. Thank you. This is well, the first trivia game that I've ever done reasonably well at. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's a great interface. It's pretty intuitive and, uh, it was fun and yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, um, yeah, I will be putting together those certificates and sending out in emails for the winners. And uh, if anybody has any further questions, reach out anytime. Otherwise, uh, I hope to catch you at another trivia down the road because I, I love to do this. So, and, cool. and you told us that you want to do this a lot, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I did invest a little bit into... Uh, Kahoot and in the level of membership I bought for the next year because I figure hey we're still in this you know and and I think it's a fun way to get together with folks and actually okay I'll let you know my birthday's in November and right. I'm gonna do a trivia for my birthday so you guys are all invited officially oh, cool. Cool. yeah I haven't picked the date but um my birthday is November 5th and it'll be somewhere around there so oh Guy Fox Day yeah do you want, do you want that to be a Saturday I don't know. Oh, maybe, maybe. Let me think about it. I gotta kind of yeah. look. So but Rick I, Chin did all the questions. Rick Chin did all the microphone questions, and so it was like I, I did, um, you know, kind of topics in bunches of five, kind of like you know Jeopardy. So, so you kind of get into that like mindset. Okay, set of microphone questions, and then I weaved others in, and then um, Mike Mateski threw in some classical questions too. So weave those in and. And we had a, a we had a game. Questions. Yeah. And did you come up with some of the questions too? I did the rest yeah. of them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, great. and uh, and then I um have a master spreadsheet that I have all the answers to with links in case anybody contested stuff and like so when I was talking with Rick and Mike, I was like, okay, you know, make sure that you link something so that. I have something to to go by. Sorry, um, something's going on in the back of here. Uh, one moment, but anyway, yeah, that's that's how it happened. And then, um, folks who are doing the uh, like behind the scenes on Kahoot, it's just it's awesome because you can use a spreadsheet according to their template in like Excel, and um, uh, it just populates the game. And then you just pick out images or you can actually do video or uh gifs um and and there is even an audio feature but it's like a monotone computer voice Ew. and yeah and with the lyric thing i kind of yeah, like to just do it. you know yeah. it's more fun to kind of just do it yourself so definitely definitely some fun your fun images you found for the questions yeah cool yeah. thanks yeah they have they have um i think with getty images i mean so you uh, type stuff in and incredible stuff pops up so oh, cool mm -hmm. yep now so. for the for one of the ones that you did before you had uh samples audio samples mm -hmm. that you played you could have done that with this one too yeah Okay. Yeah, um, I just chose not to because I wasn't yeah. sure with kind of this is kind of, you know, big time. This is the big stage here. Bam. So I wanted, <laughs> yeah, I wanted to, to to nail it out of the gate. So you did. <laughs> cool. You did. You totally you definitely did. We did. Yeah. Thanks. Absolutely. Well, if somebody wanted you to do a, a trivia contest 
for a specific occasion, could they contact you? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Cool. We can set it up, you know, whatever kind of topics and, um, yeah, just make it really fun. So, yep, happy to. Um, and you can find me at uh, com. <laughs> so. Put that yeah. in the chat and then people can have it. Cool. And you can save your own chat, people, if you want to do that here. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank thank you so much, Jess. This has been a lot of fun. And I am thinking that maybe rather than doing the breakout room, maybe we ought to just do intros. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I'll start if that's all right. Uh, my name is Greg Dixon. I'm here at DigiPen where I work, uh, DigiPen Institute of Technology, where I work as a professor of sound design and composition. And I specialize in video game sound here. And I'm the chair of the Pacific Northwest section and just really I'm glad to be here and, and get to meet you all and be with you all. Um, thanks. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll help call on people. So Jess, we've already gotten to know. Dan, would you like to introduce yourself? Dan Mortensen. Yeah, hi, I'm in Seattle and I do live sound for concerts, which uh, was pretty dead for quite a while, but I've done 20 now since uh, the beginning of July and I got 10 more coming up in October and I'm excited about that. And I've been on the section for a long time and it's really fun and it's really fun getting to see all you guys here so thank you for coming thanks dan so happy to have you here um gary louie hi i'm uh, gary louie i'm the secretary of the aes pacific northwest section and uh, my usual jobs at uh, the university of washington in seattle school of music where uh, i'm the uh, do anything audio guy. Um, I'm a life member of the AES, uh, and uh, I, I run the tellers committee for the uh, the whole AES. Thank you, Gary. Bob Cavanaugh. I'm Bob Cavanaugh. I'm in Bellevue, Washington, and I'm just an innocent bystander. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming, Bob. It's great to great. Thanks to for see having. You. Janie Wallach. Yeah, I'm Janie, and I record live music and uh, when there is any. And uh, wow, I've done two whole shows since our state opened up, and uh, the last one being last Saturday, last Friday rather, um, which uh, was came together totally at the last minute. But you know, bless the organizer for the. Um, for the uh, Fisherman's Village Fest Music Fest, uh, because he basically got me in and got me what I needed to do so I could record the band I wanted to record. And, you know, it was a long night indoors, which I haven't done in a long time. Um, but, you know, so, I mean, it, it worked. I'll put it that way. I was, you know, I was really sweating bullets, but it worked. <laughs> Great, Janie. I'm so happy that you're able to get back to work doing what you love. Me too. <laughs> Great to see you, Janie. You too. Um, Mark. Mark Gander. Hi. I um, I spent 40-some years at JBL. Some of you may have known, known me from that. David Sherman actually uh, remotely introduced me to Dan Mortensen and suggested I might be interested in some of these Pacific Northwest AES meeting. So I thought I'd try one and this was a great fun one to do. Jess, you put a great effort in your, you should be the new uh, Jeopardy uh, host that they're, <laughs> that they're looking for so desperately. Agreed. And please, Jim and the others, that, that the questions were, were very, very good. Thank you so much. And Mark, did you say where you're, where you're located? Uh, California. I live uh, on, on the Mendocino Coast in Northern California, and I still have my um, office in Topanga Canyon uh, when I, from when I was uh, working at JBL in Northridge in the Valley in, in LA area. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Mark. I hope you'll continue to check out our events in the future. 
um, Matt Weston. Hey everyone, uh, I'm uh, near London, Ontario, Canada, and uh, I enjoy going to the Toronto section of the AES whenever I can. Um, I love that we've been doing this online. I, this isn't my first Pacific Northwest meeting, so thanks for, for sharing your knowledge um, across the world. Uh, I'm a high school teacher. I teach communications technology, audio, video, animation, uh, that kind of stuff. And uh, I have a, a studio in my basement that I do for fun on weekends and in the summer. And uh, I'm a drummer in a bunch of bands as well. So just started playing shows again, too, which is pretty, pretty weird, but fun. Fantastic. Um, thank you so much, Matt, for joining us and hope you will join us again. Will do, yeah. Um, let's see, Micah Hayes. Yes, hello, um, Micah Hayes. Uh, I t I just moved to Seattle about a year ago. Um, I I took a job at Seattle Pacific University where I teach. I'm the assistant professor of music technology, and I run the music production area, um, the undergraduate area there. And so I teach class. I'm a, I'm an audio engineer and a composer, so I teach classes like recording and film scoring and live sound sound design stuff like that so um yeah but i'm really excited to be part of this pacific northwest chapter here thank you micah mm -hmm. and miley miley beckham miley are you there okay let's go ahead and move on paul colvin Paul, do you, we can't hear you. Do you want to say something? Oh, there we go. I had everything all locked up here. Hi, my name is Paul Colvin. Um, I've uh, been involved with AES since 1972. I'm a life member. Um, I've been involved in the chapters in LA, uh, here in Chicago over my lifetime. I'm not much involved in audio uh, anymore except through the AES. Um, but in the past, I did own an audio company in San Diego, and I was the engineering manager for the last few years at Litton Westrex before it went out. Um, and I presently do IT work and work at T-Mobile. Thanks for joining us, Paul. Good to see you. And Tom Stiles. Hi, I am Tom Stiles, uh, historically a Seattle resident and audio engineer. I'm based in Northern California now, but I still work often in Seattle doing studio recording and instruction. And recently, again, some live events uh, at Seattle Center and elsewhere. That's been interesting. Uh, and um, yeah, and I have, I am a past Pacific Northwest AES committee chairman. That's, that's great. Great to see you, Tom. And I didn't, I hadn't realized you had moved, but um, we hope that you'll still, if you're in the area, please join us uh, when we get back, if we do get back to more in-person events. And there is yet a slender thread that connects me. Yeah. Well, that's great. Um, and it's and it connects me in such a, uh, with a, with a periodic oscillation, like a yo-yo. So I'll be, I'll be back. <laughs> good. That's good to hear. Okay. Um, moving on. Um, sound Suresh. Hello. Hello to everyone. And, uh, I'm sound Suresh. I'm from India. I'm a lecturer in uh, audiography department. Uh, I'm working in uh, Tamil Nadu government uh, uh, MGR Film Institute. I'm taking classes for uh, audiography for films. That's it. Okay, thank you so much for joining us, Sound. Yeah, uh, we you. hope that you'll join us again uh, at our future events. Yes, of course. Yeah. All right. Have uh, I think I have one, at least one more. Uh, Vibe Vibev. Hi, it's Vebev, by the way. Vebev. And yeah, and nice to meet you all. So uh, I'm Vebhav from New Delhi, India, and I'm a student at the True School of Music for Pro Sound Engineering. And uh, 
just got just started interning at a new studio and also running my home based studio as well providing now dolby atmos mixes <laughs> and th there's that it's nice nice to be here thank you so much for being here vebev vebev is a stalwart at the tea time topics uh, meetings awesome fantastic um did i miss anyone uh sorry i muted myself did i miss anyone ariel or ari is here but she, she or he doesn't have a microphone i typed in oh oh she says uh i can leave this is over well yeah but we want to hear who you are um, sorry ari i didn't see your name i had there was a little pop-up that was covering it um ari if you want to say hello in the chat we'd love to know a little bit about you and where you're visiting from or if you're here in the Pacific Northwest area. Or not, that's okay. Okay, I think I um, have been able to check in with everybody here tonight. So I think uh, it's about that time to conclude. Uh, I just wanna say thanks again to Jess and for all her hard work on putting this event together tonight and uh, functioning as a, a efficient and awesome MC. Mm -hmm. And I'd also like to extend some thanks to Rick Chin and Mike Metesky for their help with uh, supplying questions for Jess. Um, and I'd like to thank all of you for attending and um, being with us tonight. And finally, I'd like to thank all the officers and committee people of committee members of the Pacific Northwest AES section um, for their continued support. And um, we'll be in touch hopefully soon with announcements about what's going on in October. We uh, will be in touch, but do keep us in mind on November 21st, we're gonna have a pretty exciting meeting. It's gonna be innovative for sure. Um, so, uh, and again, as Dan mentioned, if you're here locally in the area and you want to potentially help out with this event or are interested in learning more about it um let us know um you can send uh send us an email and it's um, okay to be online too we'll need people online as well okay yeah sorry um it's okay either way so dan do you want to maybe just remind folks how they can get a hold who they should contact should they contact you i would think so uh all right do you want to maybe just post your email again? yeah but so i'm people... such a slow typist you guys are going to be here for a while greg um i'm sorry did you say there was going to be an aes uh meeting next month yeah um well the the goal is that uh we had a meeting that we were planning and unfortunately it ended up not panning out um, but we're hoping to be able to take that idea and do it on another month mm. um, so right now we're trying to pivot and find a good idea for next month and we have uh, a really good lead and so i you know hoping that that'll work i'm, I'm very excited about the idea that is floating but i can't announce it yet and right. then janie the other thing that you may have missed was at the beginning we announced that on november 21st we are going to be doing an a concurrent meeting for the first time at digipen uh yeah. that's november 21st um the time is not explicit yet we don't know exactly what time it's going to start i would imagine evening um but you're welcome to join us for that everyone's welcome um and then people that are online are welcome to um, we, we, uh, the school does have a policy right now that everybody has to be fully vaccinated and wear masks when they're on campus. So just kind of letting people know that in advance so that, um, there's no, it was just, just that we're being completely clear with that. So, um, anyway, the, the goal again for our meeting in November is to be all inclusive, right? It's not meant to be exclusive in any way. So. 
if you want to join us here at DigiPen, by all means, uh, please come along. And if you want to just check it out online, it should be really interesting and engaging in that form too. All right, I think this concludes our meeting unless anybody has anybody any, anything else they wanted to say. Yeah, I wanted to ask Suresh what he put his email address in there for, Am I, uh, with what I should send him. Uh, sir, uh, maybe you can share that uh, uh, questions no, so which is uh, 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 questions which is uh, uh, coined in the quiz no, so that may be useful for my uh, future. I didn't quite follow. Was it, the email would be useful for the future? Yes, for so for the communication with me, sir. Okay. Oh. Is there anything particular you want to communicate about? No, no. Whenever uh, we we'll have that meet, no. So uh, uh, you should add me in your uh, list. That's why. Okay. All right. So. Okay. Great. The only list that I do is the tea time topics one. There's there's discussion about the subjects that come up or whatever anybody brings up during the course of the week. Do you okay. want to be on that? So maybe in future, so I will I will mail you sir, in that thing. Okay, great. Right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks everybody. I hope you all have a uh, a great evening or day wherever you're at right now. And thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you all had as good of a time as I did because <laughs> I I this was fantastic. Thanks again, Jess. Yeah. Thanks, Jess. Yeah. Very much. Yes, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Was a lot of work, Great so job. We appreciate uh, it. My pleasure. And and uh, everybody's getting an uh, invitation to my birthday party. So Good. <laughs> Good. Looking forward right. to it. Would that be virtual or in person? Jess? It'll be virtual. It'll be just okay. like this. OK. Yeah, so. Cool. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Okay. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye. Good night. 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 Good night.